continued education in Minnesota.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. from Habakkuk, the oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack, and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, 
write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. The word of the Lord. We will now read responsibly Psalm 37, 1 through 9. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, you shall give him your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord, put your trust in the Lord, and see what God will do. The Lord will make your vindication as clear as the light, and the justice of your case like a new sun. Be still before the Lord and wait, wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. A reading from 2 Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Jesus Christ. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald, an apostle, and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The word of the Lord. Oh 
Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending the sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink. Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what is commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, We are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The word of the Lord. Things won't necessarily go our way. And we may not feel so happy because 
we didn't get what we wanted, or we was disappointed in some way. But God has a plan for us. And even though things may have not looked the way we want, we have to trust or we have faith in God's plan. And we know that he has promised us good things in the end so we can still be happy and rejoice. So now we're going to sing, I've got the joy, 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 yeah, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. You know that one? you got the joy down in your heart, and you got the <clears throat> love down in your heart, and you got the peace that passes understanding. Do you understand what that means? Well, do you know Jesus? Does everybody know Jesus? Yeah. Well, yeah, I suppose everybody may have known of Jesus, but maybe some people don't really know Jesus. They may not have him in their heart. They may not love him the way we wish they would. But if you have Jesus, you can have peace. You don't have to worry about those things that don't go right in your life. And to somebody who doesn't know Jesus, that's not understandable how you can still be happy and joyful and feel at peace even though things are bad. So that's that peace that passes understanding. So we're going to sing this one. And it goes, you know this one? I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to say, I got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart.
And the reading from Habakkuk, it ends with, the righteous live by their faith. The term righteous, as used here, is not a moral term, but rather, it is a relational term. The righteous are those who are dependent on God, and thus, because they know they are dependent, they trust in God, or they have faith in God. God promises Habakkuk a vision, and that vision is that the evil will not survive. So those who are righteous, who have that relationship with God, will survive because of that relationship, their faith with God. They are faithful to God. God tells Habakkuk to write down this vision he has been shown because it will not come quickly, but he promises it will come. And Habakkuk responds to God's vision with a song. And the song wasn't in our reading today, but that song, if you read the rest of the book, ends with, I will still be joyful and glad because the Lord God is my Savior. The Sovereign Lord gives me strength. He makes me sure-footed as a deer and keeps me safe on the mountains. Habakkuk, despite the rotten conditions he and his people were living in as subjects of a foreign power, is joyful because he knows what God has promised. He is faithful to God. He trusts God's plan. He sings, though the fig tree does not bloom, nor the fruit is, and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails, and the fields yield no foods, though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the God of my salvation. Habakkuk has a heart that rejoices in God, the giver, rather than merely in the gifts from God. We know that life will inevitably bring low moments, and at times, we may have doubts. But faith is not the opposite of doubt. Just as Plato says, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the ability to do one's duty when one is afraid. So faith isn't the absence of doubt, but rather a commitment to keep believing even when surrounded by doubt. According to the psalmist, faith is delight. Joy, wonder, anticipation. Just as God gave Habakkuk a vision, he has given us a promise. The coming of the Messiah. And in that, we can find joy. We can find that peace that passes understanding. So how does one receive faith? How does one build this relationship with Jesus? How does one learn to trust God? In our reading from 2 Timothy, Paul gives thanks for Timothy's grandmother and mother for imparting to Timothy his faith. Faith is learned from the examples of others. Faith isn't something you find alone. The best possible way for parents to pass on their faith to their children is simply to talk about it, to share how their own faith shapes their words, reflections, and deeds. In the same way that Paul gives thanks to Timothy's grandmother and mother, I give thanks to my parents and the incredible example of faith that they have shown me. Faith is a gift given by Christ and mediated through all those people in our lives that have shared their faith with us. How many here this morning have never faced a hardship or a loss of a loved one? I'm guessing no one. And in those times of hardship or loss, I'm sure doubt was present. Doubt is why we gather together to worship, to study the Bible, to share fellowship, to keep the faith knowing that in those times of trouble, 
Jesus is still present. We continue to search for answers to our questions and continue in the joy of the promise God has given us. And what a joy that is. I find it ever amazing in the way that God works. For those of you who don't know, the council member that is the head usher of the month is responsible for devotions at our monthly council meeting. And on my way to the September council meeting, I remembered that the head usher wasn't going to be present, and I hadn't prepared anything for devotions. So when I reached the church, I went to the church library and started searching through the materials available there. And I found this book. I just have to pull it off the shelf. And I opened it up. And I opened it up to a page that said, The Fruit of Joy. So I read through that. And I decided to offer that as the reading for the night. For our devotions. During the meeting, the pastor indicated that she had struck out in trying to find a supply pastor for today. And I was asked to lead the service. So I agreed. And when I returned home, I decided I would read the scriptures that were going to be shared today. And I was quite amazed <coughs> at what the scriptures were saying. Because it was so related to what I had just read. And so I'll share with you what I read that night for devotions. People need joy. Life is very difficult and filled with painful losses, disappointments, failures, and seemingly insurmountable obstacles. We cannot control our circumstances or the people around us. Consequently, we can expect to experience frustration when situations are not the way we want them to be. What a bleak prospect. If we had to face life on our own, without divine assistance, we might often find ourselves feeling helpless and hopeless. Fortunately, God didn't leave us alone to wade through the dark waters. Instead, the gift of joy is promised. In Scripture, joy is also linked to pain and sorrow. It is as if the real value of the gift of joy is to help is to help us persevere through the tough times. When we receive the gift of joy, we feel capable of coping with whatever life has to offer. As Nehemiah told the Israelites, do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is possible when we acknowledge not only our own limitations, but also God's sovereignty. God is in charge. God will take care of us and see us through. God can take the worst of circumstances and work something good from them. God has a wonderful plan for our lives. God cares. Choose joy. Let go of the hurts of life. Trust God. Amen.
parents and grandparents, prophets and teachers who know love, and spread your gospel. Hear us, O God. Tend and nurture the lands of, and seas, O God. Raise up faithful stewards of all you have entrusted to human care. Hear us, O God. Save the nations, O God. Raise up faithful leaders who strive for peace and justice in the midst of violence and destruction. Hear us, O oh God. Guard those in need, O oh God. Raise up faithful advocates and caretakers for those who are oppressed, poor, lonely, imprisoned, bereaved, or sick. Hear us, O oh God. Give vision to this congregation, O God. Raise up faithful teachers, staff, volunteers, worship leaders, and council members who serve with purpose, joy, boldness, and love. Hear us, O God. You abolish death, O God. Thank you for all those who you called according to your purpose and who now rest in your light. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we commend for all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us share that fit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Amen. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through the life with the words of your Son. <coughs> give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honored and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.